Good afternoon, Shane from DIY Retro Arcade. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install our Nintendo Switch RK 1UP conversion. I'm going to use one of our uh, optional control decks that has the eight buttons. That way I can hook up every single thing on the encoder. It's not necessarily on, uh, on all the games, but like I said, I'm going to go ahead and use ours. That way I can show you how to hook every single thing up. The kit is actually uh, capable of using LED buttons, the 5 volt, or you can use a standard uh, non-LED button. I'm going to install one side LED and one side non-LED just to show you the difference in the hookup. What you'll want to do is on your arcade 1UP control panel, you'll want to take some parts off of it. You'll want to take, if you're using our panel, You'll want to take these parts off it and the switch. This right here is what you need to take off your existing. And then we want to install that into ours. Actually, I'll install that in a second, the rest of it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is install the buttons. I would go to the listing, and we'll have this on the website. This shows you the suggested uh, buttons, button pattern setup. Some people switch uh, the X and the Y. Some people switch the ZR and the ZL. Again, it's up to you. It's easily swapped afterwards. Once you start playing, you can swap them. Uh, I believe you can also go into the switch itself and rearrange the buttons, but I always like marking it. And remember, this is going to be mirrored. So this is actually player one. This is player two. So you would actually be X, B, Y, A, R, Z, R. L and B. Oop, not B. Z L. To save a little bit of time, I went ahead and marked the other side as well. I always suggest doing that. It makes it a whole lot easier once you start hooking up the buttons itself. I also go back to the listing as well and print this up right here. This will tell you exactly uh, where each wire goes as to what spot on the board. Makes it very, very easy to, to hook up. On the player, let's see here, player one side, we'll install the, the non-LED buttons. Actually, let's do the let's do the LED buttons first. It's a little more complex, so we'll do that. These. Let me grab some nuts real quick. What I always suggest, actually, let me show you something real quick. On these uh, LED buttons, you have you have four connections total. The spot that's that's hooked right here into the, the the gray box, this right here is your function. And then if you look at this gray box, you'll see a plus and a minus on the button, and it points over here. Like this side right here shows a plus and it points to that. That shows a minus and it and it points to that. So this right here will be your negative, and that'll be your positive. And function is always in the gray box itself. I always like staying consistent and doing everything the same so like if I leave the power up then I try to do it on all the buttons it just makes life a whole lot easier and I always try to stay consistent 
do the power up do the power up on all of them it it makes it a whole lot easier to do to to wire it up I'm going to go ahead and install the these buttons real quick. I have all the uh, buttons. I went ahead and did both sides. That way the board will set a little bit flusher. Next we're going to mount the encoders. What I always do on these is stick all the legs on it first. found you leave them loose and then you tighten them up after you get everything mounted it makes it easier to uh, move stuff around whenever you're using eight buttons per side on these oops I'm going the wrong way eight buttons per side on these it's it's a pretty tight control panel so you kind of have to figure out where you want to lay stuff out and also you want to make sure that you're pointing the right direction for the joystick i'll show you here in a second What I've always done on these things also, instead of sticking them out like this or like this, I always turn them in like this. And that makes it to where you can, you don't waste as much space. And then once you get them screwed down to the panel, you can tighten them up, but I do them like that. And then I would say I'm gonna set I'm gonna go ahead and set the uh, power switch in right here that way I know where it's setting at so like that uh, something else that that you also need to do is, is what I just said the blue is your joystick so I always try to point the, the blue towards where the joystick goes this will be where the USB connects in so I actually mounted it just like that right there should actually actually work pretty good so we're gonna stick it right there I think that's a good spot for it if you're using our control panels the the wood is pretty soft. The wood's pretty soft, so you don't have to pre-drill it. It won't splinter. That's the one good thing about it. Also, make sure you have all your buttons down before you try to mount these encoders, because once you get the encoders on there, it's near impossible to uh, to put the buttons on easily the screws right in I'm going to pause the video real quick and I'm going to screw the other four in once you get them screwed down what I do then is I take these right here on top and I just tighten them up. You don't have to go crazy. You just, as soon as you bought them out, you can stop. You don't want to crack the PCB. Just like that. And now this is where your diagram will come in handy. 
Uh, also, let me mark the back side of this. I have these actually marked. I mean, actually on the artwork on this one, so I want to make sure they match. So, home and capture. Home is here. So, home, capture, and then plus. This is actually the only panel where those are actually marked in the artwork. Everything else is not marked, so you can put stuff wherever you want it. So let's take this right here and make it look identical. So this, the red, red, blue to blue. So this is exactly how you're looking at it. And then take your cables. Let me explain on your cables. Your black is your ground. Your red is the plus five volt, and your yellow is your function. Very simple. So the first one we're gonna hook up is gonna be the X, which will be right here, which is right here. And it's also marked X right here on the board. So push that in to the X. And then on, on this right here, on your function portion, it doesn't matter which you do where, uh, as far as the function or the ground, I always like staying consistent. So we're gonna use, actually let me uh, look and see which one is the negative for the, okay. So the negative is gonna be on this side for the power. So let's go ahead and keep it consistent. We'll put the we'll put that one there, and then we'll stick the other one right there. And now again, this is your function wire, and your function will always go into the one that's got the gray block. Put that one in, and then the red is your power, which goes on the outside, just like that. And then your next one is, actually we'll just go in order, your B, which is your third one down. We'll take another wire. We'll plug it into the third block. Again, your negative will be on the outside. And your power is the red. yellow is the function and that button is hooked up I'm going to pause the video and I'm gonna go ahead and plug up the rest of this cluster right here there's no point in wasting time watching me plug buttons up I hooked up all the buttons now I'm down to the home and the capture if you if you look at it the capture is right before the first red so it'll be right there and again these hook up just like all the other ones Same way.
Then the home is right above that one. Right there. And these encoded, whoop, that one's missing the ground. try to loop this stuff over and around however it gets it to the button the cleanest so you don't have a big bird's nest Take your time and do it slow. Once you lock these things in place, they are hard to get off. Okay, so there's that right there. Now let's go to the other side. We'll go ahead and complete the other side. We'll mount this up and we'll, we'll match exactly what we have here. So let's do that. On your non-LED buttons, we have this side already mounted. Actually, let me tighten this down right here. I did forget to do that. It's not wobbling all over the place. If you're going to use uh, non-LED buttons and you know for sure that you're never ever going to use LED, then what I always do to kind of clean, clean up is on your cable right here, what I always do, and again you don't have to do this, you can leave it intact. I'd always cut one leg off the single leg make sure you don't cut the one coming off the pin cut that then I always take the red one and cut it right there and that gives you just your two wires it's a little bit cleaner again you don't have to do that you can leave it. It's not going to hurt anything. Then again, you're at the same thing. I position the blue so that it'll point towards the joystick. Again, it just makes it a little bit easier to hook up. And this is the, the, the exact same thing that we did over here, except you have less wires to hook up. This is your, your X button. This is your X, your X right here. And again, these are a lot simpler because you only have two wires. If you cut the other ones off, push that there and that there. And again, it doesn't matter which side the black is on and which side the yellow is on for function. It'll work either way. You're just simply closing the button to make them work. I always try to say, stay consistent. It, it just works out better like that. Looks prettier. I'm going to go ahead and stick all these. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wire up the rest of these buttons. That way you don't have to sit there and watch me do one at a time. Once you finish that right there, everything is hooked up. Uh, we'll install the power switch. The RK1 power switch. And... Oops. Wish I forgot these little things. Don't forget to drop those in the hole first. Oh, your switch will not switch.
and there is your switch all mounted up. The next thing we'll do is we'll stick the joysticks on real quick. There's your switches. Your volume switch, I have no way to make that work with it, unfortunately, so that's mine is just unhooked because I don't ever use it for anything. So for the joysticks, we'll stick those on real quick. I've already got the holes marked, so that makes life a little easier. Actually, let me show you one thing. I'm fixing to do something wrong here. The joysticks need to be turned like that. This needs to point up towards the monitor, just like we always do on all of our stuff that's arcade one up. So make sure that the pins point up. If they do not point up, your joystick will not work correctly. So it needs to go just like that. And again, make sure that sticks up. There's your joysticks. And complete a control deck will look something like that. Put those on. Throw those on. Actually, I'll throw those on in a second because this will make it even taller. Let me show you one other thing here before we get too far in. Let's go ahead and plug in the joysticks. And for the joysticks, you're going to use these actual Sanwa cables like you're used to seeing, not the encoder cables. But it'll be a cable that looks like that. I am missing one. Oh, there it is. Cable only goes one way, it goes into the blue. As with all these other ones, these things have little little notches. It only goes one way. So just plug it in. And then the Sanwa connection itself. You'll see the, the flap. It goes on top. Which is on just like that. And that is connected. Shorten that up a little bit like that. And we'll lock that in just like that. And that side is ready to go. And let's do this side real quick. Same thing, I'll leave that knot in it. It's always better to be a little too long than too short, so. And again, same thing. Doing it up. And of course, it's always got to be a pain. So I'm 
there but it's hell getting old that's all i can tell you all right and there you have that the only other thing that you have to plug into the board are these things right here and these right here are for the uh, usb to plug into the actual switches base so these will use this cable Then it plugs into the red port right here. And again, it only goes one way. See the slits and see the slits on that smooth side. Your slits on that side locks in just like that. This will push in on this side. Just like that. And then your USB cables will, will plug into this. I'm gonna pause the video real quick. I'm gonna do a little bit of tidy up, zip tie some of this stuff together, and we'll be back in a sec. And of course, I can only find two zip ties in the entire store, so we're just going to not tidy up anything. You guys can do that on your own. So let me show you one thing that you do need to do and what's going to be what. You'll have a cable like this in the kit. It may look different, but it'll be, it'll be similar to this. It'll have your female 2-pin JST and then your male and your female. And what this will do, this will plug into the, the power switch. This will make your, uh, your LCD turn off and on. Uh, it'll power on the LCD. Actually, I'll show you how it plugs in. It'll just push in just like anything else. It'll plug in just like that. And then you'll have that. It'll power the LCD and the amp on and off. It's not going to turn off the uh, LED buttons. That's the only thing that kills me is... The encoders are getting powered off of the uh, switch so when you kill the power up here it doesn't kill the power to the switch i'll actually show you an alternate way to hook up the led that will but it'll it'll entail basically cutting everything uh, off and making it look like this and then using an led harness and then plugging the led harness into uh, the y splitter that comes with the kit the next thing that, that we'll go over is you'll need to pick a panel. Let me find one. So the kit's going to come with, with four speed, I mean, it was, excuse me, with two speakers. And these right here will be optional because these don't fit the newer machines. These will only fit the these right here only fit the uh, wave one and wave two machines they won't fit the uh the uh, wave three the cabarets and uh legacy uh, additions so we stopped including these because it makes it too complicated so we just if you have a wave one or wave two we'll put a link into the various panels that will fit the machine and you can pick which one you want the one that most people use is doesn't have the holes in the center i just have this one this is already on the machine so this is the one we actually made we actually don't even sell this one because it's got two extra buttons up here but anyway you'll take and if you do get one of these panels simple as can be you'll take and you'll screw the speakers to it as simple as that the kit will also come with the speaker wire to use to attach to the amp It'll come with a three foot piece. You can shorten it if you need. But the wire will already have the crimps on the on the end. What I would suggest you do is take your 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 flathead, a little small flathead, and kind of wiggle it to get it started. It's really hard to put this on the speaker because the terminals on the speakers flex really bad. So let's do this one real quick.
And then the speakers are going to be marked plus and minus. Put the red to the plus and the black to the minus. Do that. Now, like I said, they are actually marked. I don't know if you can see it in the video. But on the speaker itself, you can see a plus right there and you can see a minus right there. So let's take the red. And I always try to grab it right there. Something else you can also do is take and put like a little screwdriver or something underneath. What you want to do is you want to hold the edge of this board up so whenever you push down, it doesn't it, it doesn't snap the board. But like I said, if you flex it open a little bit first, it makes it a whole lot easier. Make sure it's tight enough to actually lock in as well. You don't want to make it too loose. Something else you can also do if you did over, that sounds a little loose, is go back and take a pair of needle nose pliers or something of the sort. And just kind of squeeze it. Squeeze that, and that's plenty tight. And do the same thing to the other side. And on this one, the plus is right here. Again, we need to hold that. That's pretty tight still. Same thing over here. Okay, it's pretty tight. Actually, I'll push that in a little bit more. All right, there you go. And this is ready to go on the machine at this point. Uh, you may, if it was me, I would go ahead and strip these, strip these wires back. That way you can just take them directly in the amp and it'll be 100% ready to go. strip back about that much of each is all you need to do that'll make it ready that's assuming my three foot is the right length I haven't measured it yet so it may be way too long I know it's at least long enough so if not we'll cut it again all right and we're done with that step so that panel is done Now the only thing we have left to do to this is put the bat tops on. black bat top somewhere up oh, right there I'll tell you what I think I'm gonna put a red on it I'll be right back I got me a red one that way we stay keep everything coated to coated right all right and there you go this panel is 100% done and ready to sit on the machine at this point in the game Let's go to the machine now. First thing we will do is reinstall speaker plate. By far the easiest. 
my front panel is not there, I just leave it open because it's easier to work on. We use them just for testing, so. Okay, this is the back of the machine. This is your H panel on the on the Wave 1, Wave 2 machine. And what we've done is we've cut a one and a half inch hole. And the kit does come with a grommet. You will have to cut your own hole. Go to uh, like Home Depot or uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or anywhere like that. They will have a one and a half inch paddle bit. They're not that expensive. I cut this with a CNC machine and I looks like I slightly undercut that, but it went in. The one and a half inch paddle bit will 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 cut it perfectly. You'll also be using a mount that uh, I'll leave the link for it from Amazon. This is not anything that we carry. show you where we're going to mount it. We're going to mount it at the top. Don't forget this hangs over so don't go too far over. This thing is actually made where I can, it should be pretty close to center. I haven't tried this yet so So I'm just gonna stick four of the screws. It comes with six. It comes with what's called a wall dog, which is actually for drywall. But I think we'll be okay using it in this as well. Sure. You need to make sure you go down enough. If not, you're gonna hit the hit the inside of the marquee. I may not have. That may be an issue. So yep. That is going to be an issue. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do a little rearranging. So actually, let's start with the amp. We'll put it on top. Actually... Set that amp right, right there. And this right here, you will have to pre drill. Find another screw. The uh, drill bit I used was an eighth of an inch. Let's mount that right there. Being straight never happens, it's just how it is. <laughs> you don't have to crank down on this 
once it once you feel it hit, then that's good enough. And there's your amp. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this over to about right here. One thing that's important to note, the USBs you're going to be hooking into are right there. So it's very important that you point this way. So don't drill your hole on the opposite side. If you do, then your cables are going to come out into the side wall there. So let's actually... Try to center this now. I hope so. Looks right anyway. I'm actually going to put four screws in this. I don't think you really, don't think you really need a six. Yeah, I don't mind. Let's do six. Let's go about that overkill. One thing that you need to also remember when you're installing this piece is kind of test fit it. It's going to go right here. Let's stick all this back together. Stick that together and that together. And that's going to be about right there. So you want to make sure that your switch will not hit the amp. We actually probably would have been a little bit better if we had moved that over a little bit more, but it'll be okay where it's at. About right there is where it's going to be. So just make sure that you leave enough clearance. We will be mounting the mount next. Always just start the screws, don't tighten them all the way down. If you do, you may not be able to hit your other holes. When you don't tighten it down all the way, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So always just start them. It makes life a little easier. Got the missing screw. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the USB. You'll have two USB cables like this right here. You need to hook one each into these, into the actual encoders. And make sure you also have this cable plugged in as well. This is where we're going to plug our power in. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, plug these cables in and then I'm going to set the CPO into the machine and we'll go from there. I'm fixing to set the panel down. The way that I try to route the wires is you'll have your encoders dangling here and then your power will be in the center and I, and I try to actually space it between the speaker wire there. It makes it a little bit easier whenever you're hooking it up on the back side. So this is your one side stays on this side of the wire, one side stays on this side of the wire, and then your power stays right in the middle. And then we'll just set that down. Alright. And it looks just like that. And now we're going to go on the back side and make the connections. Let's go ahead and connect up the speaker wire to the amp. Take your speaker wire that's hanging and we're going to get the left hand side first. And feed it through. On the back of your amp, it's marked, there's an R and an L. So this is the left hand side. Your black will go under the black alligator clip and the red will go under the positive. Pull down the clip and just simply shove it in the hole. And then do the same thing to the other side. Feed it through. Black to black, red to red. Nothing, nothing com complex about it. Besides being blind and not being able to see the hole. Okay. Then the next thing you're going to need is your actual your actual switch base. Take your HDMI cable and you can go ahead and plug your power cable in too. Go ahead and do that as well. If not, you'll have to do it. I'm going to leave mine. I'm not going to plug mine in because it's just one more cable in the way. So. And then what we want to do is feed the USB cables through. Connect them. We'll grab the first one. Feed it through. Plug it in. Take the other USB cable. Plug it in. You need to make two more connections to the amp. This will be your 3.5 by 3.5 uh, input. So take it and it'll plug in right here on this little pink port. So just feed that in. And then simply plug that in. And then you'll have a power cable that's just an extension. Drop it down in the hole. Plug it into the power. Take your HDMI cable drop it down in the hole. You can route this HDMI cable or however you want to. I'm just going to stick it right there for now. And once you get everything the way you want it, you can take your grommet and push that on. And then all your cables are 
right there. The next step we're going to do is jump down to the center of the machine and we'll make all the connections, the final connections. This is going to be kind of hard to film. There's no real easy way to do it by yourself. So we're going to do the best we can. We're going to assume that you already have an LCD driver installed. If you do not, we'll put a link down in the description that shows you how to install that. But we'll do, we'll start making the connections. We'll start with the easiest one, the HDMI cable. Plug that into the LCD driver. And then your next one, we'll plug in the amp. This is for your sound out, which will do it, it'll do it through the HDMI. So you'll take your 3.5 millimeter and you'll plug it in there. I believe it goes in the outside one. If it doesn't, then I'll make a correction and, and tell you, but I believe it goes in the outside one. And then, what else do we have? What you'll need to do in the kit, there will be a splitter. Take your splitter and plug it into there. And then this is coming down from your amp. This is your extension cable that you plugged into the amp. Plug it into that. And that leaves you with one 12 volt out that, that works off the power switch of the arcade one up. So if you have a marquee or if you want to do the LED wires or the LED buttons through an actual uh, harness to turn them off and on, you can hook it in right there as well. Then your next connection will be this is the harness that that's hanging down from the power switch so what you'll do is you'll take the mail and you'll plug it into the uh, splitter and then what happens from there is your final connection right here this will plug into the uh, power supply So this unit right here, we'll plug in, the final connection will be right here, and that'll plug into that. And that right there will give power to the entire unit. And that should be all hooked up and ready to go. Let's test it out. We now have the switch docked. There is one setting that you need to change on the switch. If you don't, then the USB controllers won't be seen. I'm going to show you how to do it actually on the screen, but you'll need to do it before you dock it. So let's get this over here. Make sure the amp is, is turned on. It's not going to light up yet because it actually works off of the the uh, the arcade power button, the arcade one power button. The amp is powered off of that. Like I said, the buttons here you can't power off and on through the switch because it's actually powered off the USB port on the switch itself. So I'm going to flip this on. The amp will then light up. And let me set this back down. If your buttons aren't marked, you can use your little cheat sheet here that you printed up earlier. To know what button is, is what. But the first thing you need to do before you dock the switch is go into your system settings. And then go down to controllers and sensors. And then you'll see the one right here that says Pro Controller. Pro Controller Wire Communication. From factory, those are always set to off, but you need to make sure you set that to on. And then once you set it to on, dock the, uh, the unit. And then power everything up. And then when you go under controllers, you'll see two USB controllers at that point. The next thing you can do is go in and check your buttons to make sure they all work. Go back into system settings again. Go into controllers and sensors. And then go to test inputs. Test controller buttons. And then you can push the buttons. 
and they should all register as you expect. You can pull out your cheat sheet or however you did it and verify X, B, Y, A, R, Z, R, L, Z, L, X, B, Y, A, R, Z, R, L, Z, L. And then your capture. You can see it says capture taken. And then when you hit the home button, it's going to just take you back to the main screen. You can also test the uh, plus and minus. And if you hit the home, back to the main screen you go. And you should be all set and ready to play. I haven't played much on this, so I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I know it takes a thing a second to load, so. to Brawlhalla. Training. Boat fall. Good. There you go. Easy as that. 